My name is Eric Davies. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Toronto Faculty of Forestry. Today we're going to take a little walk through Cedarvale and we're going to go look at some interesting trees, see some old growth forest. I had seen this experiment once where there's a world famous violin player set up in a subway stop and people just walk by it and not really appreciate how good the music is. Cedarvale is a great example. Many people walk right through here not really realizing they're walking by one of the nicest old growth forests in Ontario. Here we are at one of the most beautiful trees in Cedarvale Park. It's a white oak tree. It's probably well over 100 years, maybe 150. When we looked up at the top of the canopy, we can see some acorns. There's about 70 oaks in North America. There's actually more oaks in North America than there are trees in Europe. The white oaks have round lobes on their leaves. The red oaks have pointy tips. When the white oak, this one right here, produces acorns, you really want to take advantage of them and get them because you can only get them five to ten times a century. And most trees are what they call monaceous and then they have male and female flowers on the same tree. Because no plant wants to self-fertilize, they want to reproduce with another tree. So that pollen will blow across the landscape and hopefully find another tree. So here we're standing below the tree. By the way, here's a little cicada. You can see that that has emerged from the roots. And there's the, uh, the skeleton. This is the most abundant herbivore in Eastern North America, this one little insect. If you were to get all the animals in a forest, and pile them up in a big pile, the biggest pile would be cicadas, right? And they live underground for sometimes 17 years, and they eat the roots, and then they emerge like this. They come up and then they spend one year breeding and, and go down. So oak trees provide habitat for biodiversity, not only above ground, but also, also below ground. So now we're gonna walk around and see one of the closest neighboring oaks. We want to have a little, a little pit stop. This is the choke cherry, and you can see the berries are turning this uh, dark red. And uh, you can eat these things. They're usually a little sour. So this tree here, we're only about 100 meters from that other large oak. So there's a good chance the acorns we saw on that tree were pollinated from this tree. Healthy soil is aerated, right? You've got lots of insects in the soil that are creating little holes. So if you're walking on healthy soil, it's compacting and compacting, and then it makes it so that the water can't actually drain through the soil. And you'll notice this when you have big rains, you'll come out to a place like this and the water will just be running down the hill instead of percolating into the soil, right? One thing I do notice in here though is, is gypsy moth. Now this is a European species of moth that was introduced to North America, and you'll see an egg mass in here. Actually, I can see more on the bottom of the branches here. Yeah. You'll, you'll see these egg masses, they're yellow ones. A healthy ecosystem has a diversity of species, whereas you get these invasive species and it just turns into a, a dead monoculture. If you look in here, you can see there's, there's really nothing. There's 100% European buckthorn. It's basically a green desert. It looks green, but there's no life in here. So, so we're just uh, dipping down to the pond here. It's actually not an algae, it's a, it's a little plant called duckweed. Each, each individual plant is like, it's a floating aquatic plant. There's a snapping turtle, a resident snapping turtle that's down here. Now we've come down to take a quick peek right now. We don't see it, but keep your eye open. It's nice to be able to keep a bit of habitat for those guys. We're lucky to have them around. When a tree gets really big, it goes into what's called the super canopy and it merges above the canopy of the tree. And so things like hawks and owls and even migratory songbirds use these as, as signposts We're gonna head off the path up into the, the old growth part of the forest. This is one of the most important things about forest health, is downed woody debris. Now you might look at this and think this is, uh, it looks ugly or it looks unkept, but this is very, very important. It'll probably take 100 years for this to biodegrade. And this thing will host as much biodiversity as a dead tree, almost as it will as a living tree. Once it gets to a stage three and it becomes softer and it's filled of all these amazing insects. Pileated woodpeckers, the largest woodpecker in North America, they'll land right on top of this and they'll start hacking away at it and getting all the grubs out of it. It's just a very important part of the forest. This is a bitter nut hickory. So just standing next to this tree, I can hear these nuts dropping. And in a forest, this is called mast. Probably millions of kilograms of these that will fall to the ground in the GTA this year. And this is like the gasoline of a forest. What you want to do when you're collecting acorns is you want to make sure they're ripe. And the way to do that is do the cut test. So what we'll do is we'll get a few, we'll cut them in half, okay? There's another one. You're also, okay, now this is another thing we're looking for. This is a weevil. The adult beetle 
would have put its ovipositor in there and laid a little egg inside this acorn and then it's growing. So we're gonna have a little stop at this tree. Just probably everyone would recognize this as the white birch. Indigenous crafts such as birch bark canoes and all kinds of even water containers have been made out of this for literally thousands of years. Now what we see here is something worth pointing out. You'll see this tree, this young white birch is getting strangled by an invasive Nora maple. Nora maple is now becoming the most common tree in the Toronto ravines. It is the most common tree in downtown Toronto. I mean, it's already on our money. If you look at the $20 bill, uh, that's a Norway maple on our, on our money. So it's, uh, it's just taking over everything. It's taking over our forests, it's taking over our culture, and it's leaving us with a colorless tree that's not good for beauty, it's not good for life. When they grow around the tree, it'll, it'll cause wounds on the tree. And uh, you know, the, these are the kind of things we really want to remove. Of course, it's getting the, the black spot. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about this later. This is the hemlock tree. If you want to find an owl in the winter, you walk through and you look up a hemlock tree and that's where they're going to be. Here's a native sugar maple. So this is the tree that's on the Canadian flag. This is the sugar maple. This is where we get our maple syrup from. So it's really important that we keep this tree around. We're pretty close to the backyards. And what happens is you'll see this stuff here. This is all the invasive ornamental plants. This is gout weed and it can grow very well in the shady areas. You'll see it's taken over this whole hilltop. So this ecosystem is now dead and all these are the Nora maple. Now how do you tell a Nora maple from a sugar maple? Well it's actually pretty easy what you do. If you take a leaf off what it does is it oozes a toxic white latex from the leaf. If you get a tree from Europe, like the Nora maple, the native insects don't know how to eat it, so it's toxic. Not only does it not host biological diversity, so there's no insects, then there's no birds, there's nothing holding it back. So all the insects would be normally chewing away at the leaves, like they do our native oaks and our native maples. Non-native trees are introduced here, they're released from their enemies, and then this gives them a competitive advantage over the native trees, and they start pushing out all the native trees. They get black spot. Can you see these spots on here? Only a few decades ago, you couldn't even find this disease in the forest, and now it's on every single Nora maple that I've seen. Perhaps this disease can jump to the native maple, and if that happens, you can imagine uh, how devastating that would be. If we don't do anything, it could be the only tree you see. It's this natural beauty that's eroding. The Canadian flag has a sugar maple. They're rapidly declining. It's being replaced by this colorless, fast-growing Nora maple. What escapes the eye, however, is the more subtle, uh, biodiversity like the butterflies and the birds, these things, that, the, the chipmunks, the jumping mice, the flying squirrels, all Canadians that really that love this stuff and they want to go see it and explore it, they're, they're now being robbed of the opportunity. But if we all band together, um, not only can we do something about it, but we can have a fun time doing something about it. You know, Places like Cedarvale has the Friends of Cedarvale. Check out their website, see what they have to offer. They have walks. They've got beautiful gardens around here. Our organization proudly takes care of this park. We want to keep the park the way it is and if possible improve it. I love seeing people enjoying this park as long as they don't drop litter. If you'd like to find out more about Cedarville Park, go to our website and read my blog post. Thank you and I'll see you in the park.